Yes. So, mm -hmm. um, so, anyway. so Michael Michael Hall actually wanted to ask: um, Did did you ever consider uh, become going into the ordinary and becoming a priest when you became Catholic, or was that <laughs> off the table? Oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> Um, humankind cannot bear very much reality. How much reality do you guys want? Can we go with? So, so um, first of all, when I was made an Anglican missionary bishop, one of the reasons I accepted it was because um, the orders of this American Episcopalian church came from a Catholic bishop, a bishop called Duarte Costa, who was a diocesan bishop in Brazil in 1946. And, uh, and, and as we talked about why this might work, there was some thought that Catholic bishops with, with valid Anglican bishops with valid Catholic orders might act, might be able to act as kind of con ecumenical conduits in the kind of diplomatic world that we saw coming. Anyway, be that as it may, uh, I had Catholic orders. And so one of the things that happened was my local Catholic bishop asked me to come and see him, and very kindly saying, you know, you're the nearest Catholic bishop to my diocese. He was very sweet. Uh, and so my, my, my orders were valid but irregular uh, at best. And then he said, we need you on the team. So um, I'd like to ordain you. I'll send you to a canon lawyer for six months, and then I will ordain you to be a priest in my diocese. Would you accept that? And I prayed. And, and sometimes the Holy Spirit tells you what he wants. And the answer was yes. So I just instantly said yes. I said, well, when will you come over? And I said, well, you know, maybe either you know, between one and two years, I'd like to write a book. There's some theology I want to do. And he said, no, I would, I'd like you please straight away. I said, oh, well, do you mean beginning of next year no he said next week wow <laughs> <laughs> so um i prayed and the answer was yes i said okay yes so then the process began of ordaining me and um it went wrong and i still don't know why it went wrong but uh i went through the psychological tests i filled in all the forms and um oh you're too rigid i waited i waited <laughs> i waited two years without anyone saying anything to me or anything happening. I was being humble and obedient, and I lasted two years. And then I said to the Lord, Lord, and this is quite painful because I, I was, I'm sure. I'd, I'd given up Anglicanism. I was, I was stripped of everything, but, but, in, but, in, but in a limbo. I thought, well, it's good for my purgation and my humility, but you know, this, the trouble is I've, I've also been involved in institutions where they abuse you. And there's a very difficult line between humility and obedience of being abused. <laughs> it's not easy to know where yeah. it is. And after two years, I thought, okay, we're crossing the line. Uh, so I prayed. And uh, I had got fed up saying the office with the bad translation uh, of, in the daily office of the Psalms. It's the, 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 the Psalms are translated incompetently, and I don't like it. And so yeah. I noticed that the ordinariat had, had translations of the Psalms go back to Coverdale, and they're rather beautiful. They're, they're more accurate. They're very, very, very beautiful. So I said to the Lord, look, if, if I've got any years left, I'd like to say my prayers with these. Maybe I should join the ordinary, and that would be an answer to my frustration with the Psalms. So I phoned my bishop up, who had always been saying, in answer to reporters' questions, because people asked, when's Father Ashton going to be ordained? Uh, it's, it's with Rome. They're just taking their time. So I said, would you mind if I transferred to the ordinary? No, not at all. So the ordinary pick it up. And they said, well, we know the CDF very well. We're very close to them. We're a creation of theirs. We'll find out. And a few days later, I got a phone call saying, they've never received your papers. Nothing's happened. You don't exist. Wow. So, so my papers had got, you know, stuck. Someone had, someone had put them in a filing cabinet and closed the door, and nothing mm -hmm. had happened. And, and I've never, you know, nobody apologized. Nobody explained. Well, okay, I could still do humility and patience. That was, that, that's what happened. So then the ordinary took it up. But, the, but then the deal changed because the bishop had said to me, six months with a canon lawyer, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that you've, you're sufficiently formed. You know, I know what you say in public, uh, that, that's, but you do well learn to count the canon law. But the ordinary then said, well, unfortunately, we, you know, Rome is changing the rules and we may have to send you to seminary for between one and three years. And I said, I said actually, let me tell you now, I'm, I'm, I'm really at full stretch. I have an internet ministry. I'm writing. I'm I'm talking. I'm I'm I have people becoming Catholics every, every week by email. I don't know, thirty or forty people are in constant kind of conversation with me about their spiritual journey. I, I don't have time to go to seminary for three years. I just yeah. I mean, there's nothing I'd rather do than read Aquinas for three years. I really would love it. <laughs> but, but 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 I'm you know I'm I'm writing. I'm arguing. I'm praying. I'm 
so I said, I, I can't do that. But I tell you what, I'll give you one year. I mean, I'll, I'll put everything on ice for a year if, if that's what it takes. Um, and, um, uh, and, and then the kind of the answer, well, it was one of those answers where they said yes. And I thought, you know, you're going to say no. I know you're saying yeah. yes to keep me on board, but I didn't trust you. Just, who knows, I could have been, let us say I was wrong. It doesn't matter because yeah. it didn't come up. Then, then, <laughs> so the, then they discovered that, that after my papers had never got to Rome, this time the ordinary had sent them off. And I think after nine or 12 months, I got, a, I got an email saying, we're very sorry. We've got to start at the beginning again. We thought we sent them to Rome, but they've just been sent back from Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That sounds about right with our church. <laughs> well, for 12 months, my, my papers have been in Vietnam and they just, you know, they just sat there and well, yeah, they're back now. We're, we're, we're going to give them to the papal nuncio to take them personally to Rome. And <laughs> okay, humility and obedience. So we've done three years now with nothing happening. Okay. Um, well, I think you also have to say, look, uh, sometimes when we're in, I mean, just like the whole scenario with your wife, where the first one was a giant argument, and then you could, you see God's hand in hindsight, you know, and we don't see no. God's oh, hand no, in the completely. moment. No, 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 I'm, I'm good. You, you, you're, you're getting ahead of me. You're quite right. So, so the, the next, oh, we see God's hand. God, he's so merciful. He's so kind. So the next thing happened was that there's a guy in the ordinary, I won't say who it is, but he's someone who likes crapping over other people. You know, there are just some people who like that. Mm -hmm. If they think you're too big for your boots, they shit on you. Yeah. You know they're shitting on you. They know they're shitting on you. That's part of the whole, you know. And and but it's I'm just a bit too old and mean to be shat on much. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so you know, once again, you say to yourself, Lord, is this another invitation to more humility and patience, or are we we into people shitting on me? And uh, and so this guy, he wrote to me saying, if, if, after all this, if we put you forward to seminary for between one and three years, guess which we're going to choose? Um, uh, you do know you're going to have to withdraw from all public media. There was, I think the phrase he used was, it would not be prudent to permit mm -hmm. you a public platform of the kind you had now. And so I wrote back to him and said, you do know what you're saying, right? Uh, yeah, do you you do you intend this? This is not just stupidity or putting me down to cutting me down to size. Uh, I'm I'm on British television once or twice a month. I'm in the newspapers. I'm I'm on the radio. I'm I have, but God has given me this platform. I'm now you can't ask for it. It doesn't come because yeah. you ask. It comes because people want you to contribute. So I just said to him, to, just to check this. You 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 would want me then to say no to all the invitations to speak out on behalf of the Catholic Church and the gospel. Uh, once I enter into formal formation, yes. So I wrote to the ordinary and I said, <laughs> I would have thought this is something that needs talking about for a start. You know, we're, first of all, we're talking about a scale. Uh, are we talking, you know, we still haven't got to the one or the three years, but I mean, conceivably, this is swearing me to silence up to three years um, without any discussion, <laughs> without any exceptions. You know, so I wrote, I, I wrote saying, does this reflect your intentions? <laughs> Giving the guy a chance to say, no, we've made a mistake. I'm sorry. This is, you know, mm -hmm. oh, let, let's start again. Let's have a conversation. You know, we know how this works. But instead I got back, yeah. So I said. It seemed like an intentional yeah, muffling. <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I, it was both. It was both an intentional muffling and it was an attempt to put me in my place. As they, they yeah, they, yeah that's, it, se it seems like, uh, like they, they actually didn't like that you were off speaking in these places and they wanted to put you, you know. Go. So maybe, maybe so. So I, so at that point I wrote back and said, you know, for me to be ordained requires trust on both sides. And actually you've just lost mine. So I'm out of here. Yeah. And I mean, that hurt a great deal. I've always considered myself both a priest and a bishop. Uh, it's been very painful being in limbo for three years. Who am mm. I? What am I doing? What do you want from me, Lord? Am I giving, you know, if, if you want me to give this up permanently and be a layman, I'll do it. But just tell me, don't, don't leave me in this either or situation. I mean, the only reason, I mean, literally the only reason I began to speak out in public was because I'd been consecrated a bishop and I had an apostolic duty to defend the church. Otherwise, I could have sat back and just talked in pubs and bars and on the internet. I, I didn't go, I didn't do any of this because I needed the publicity. I did it because I believed 
God had given me an apostolic responsibility for the body of Christ. And so then to give it up was was quite hard. But then I said, well, okay, all right, so this is tough. Um, but meanwhile, look, look at what God has given you. God has given you a voice and a platform. What, what else would you want? Well, I want to celebrate Mass. Well, you, you can't do that, but you, but you, but you can have the platform. Mm -hmm. So I have the platform, and I, and I use it, and I can't celebrate Mass. Well, too bad. Um, <laughs> into some, into each life, some rain was full. Uh, but, but, but yes, I didn't expect to find myself here, but I, I get to write and fight for the church, and there's nothing else I want to do. And, and at so this, this moment, just, that may be the, the better, more powerful position for you to be in. Well, I think that's true. Uh, I can't see. Let me see if I can get rid of this. Oh, I see. Okay, hang on. Right. Done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that, um, look, uh, you see so often anytime a, a, a priest does come out and say powerful truths, sometimes their bishop says, no, 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 out of the spotlight. Whoa. We don't want you there. And a priest has to make that decision. So maybe... So, so uh, absolutely, uh, the, there isn't any question at all that, particularly in the present circumstances, from from the Vatican downwards. I mean, every, we we all know what the atmosphere in the Vatican is described as being. We know what pressure the bishops are all under. We know what the political situation in their church is. The only way you could be free to speak out in the public space in the way that I do would be as if you were not ordained. Mm 